Okay, it's actually been about a week since the first video where I talked about wanting to uh, 3D print an animated, actually a servo-controlled programmable four-legged robot dog, loosely based, you know, on the looks of the SpotBot by Boston Dynamics. The main goal was to stay at around 40 bucks, worst case $50, and, uh, and at that price range I didn't really wasn't aiming for the walking what I was aiming for was the prancing I just remember way back years ago when they first were doing their uh, big dog and all those other ones how they would just stand in place and, and prance I found that uh, very entertaining to look at so I kinda wanted to achieve that for as little amount of money as possible and uh, this is what I came up with I'm actually closer to the forty dollar range uh, here's the port for hooking in the cable to program the on off switch there are four AA batteries in the back here you can actually see a couple of the 9G servos for controlling the arm I wanted to use uh, six servos in this simply because the uh, Pololu Mini Maestro that I'm using that's the programmable control chip in there can drive up to six servo so why not why not use them all right um, I haven't tried it on this surface. Let's find out what uh, my first program that I wrote for it does. Now it should repeat the whole thing. <clears throat> So we're seeing different programs. I'm going to stop it here. Uh, I went through different step programs. I went through one where in the beginning I would lift one foot and put it back down before it could tip, then the other, then the rear, and then the rear. So basically one foot at a time. That happened early in the program. Then I tried uh, squatting and standing front. Now it could squat more but uh, due to the weight of the batteries, and we talked about this earlier, I'm using the very inexpensive 9G analog servos um, that I found on Amazon. We could get 10 of them for $18 and some odd cents, so they're like $1.80 each. Well, and $1.80, you don't get your fastest speed servo, and you certainly don't get your most powerful servo. So I knew those were going to be limiting factors, that if I went into a full squat position with the servos, they wouldn't have the strength to be able to lift the weight of all those pen light batteries back up again. So everything was a compromise, how much I squatted down, how much I went in the front. Um, by the time I got to the end of that program, before when I told you, okay, now it's going to repeat, the last thing it did there was the normal uh, spot bot and big dog type walk, where this foot and the rear foot back here both lifted at the same time went down then this foot and this one up and down and it, I had it alternate that for a few times and it was able to do that without uh, without falling over so it actually performed it let's let's try it one more time and then for all of you that really want to know how the programming and stuff works I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of that and for those of you that are nervous you can stop the video this table is a bit slanted, so it kind of slides back a little. So that chattering you just heard there was the one foot at a time, and here I'm showing that I can lean it to one side and exercise them, standing it up. And that is the actual one like you saw Big Dog and Spot Bots do. Now the program could have been anything. This is just the program that I wrote just to test out everything. And here comes the prance coming up after it does this. There we go. Then it'll just repeat the program again. So let's um, let's move this back a little. We need to be able to see the screen and I think initially the dog. If we start talking about the programming. I'm going to get rid of this uh, picture up here. That was the original uh, 3D render I did of what I was conceptualizing and so if you're using the Polo Lu Mini Maestro you might as well get their well let's 
hook this up so you can see what I'm doing here first. The camera really needs an operator. I'm going to plug in the uh, mini USB adapter in here and into the computer. Okay, now I'm going to move this closer so we can see the screen better, basically. I hope. Maybe I can get even closer. Hang on, everybody. You're going mobile. It's kind of hard for both me and the camera to fit in this area. Okay. I realize you're not quite... Uh, leveled but what can I do I gotta get the mouse too yeah. okay I'm gonna disconnect this for a moment there we go so basically you want to download and it's free at the uh, Pololu website see so it says the Maestro Control Center and there's a bunch of other sections under it that we're going to need to see in order to work with this. Now that I have the dog plugged in, I'm going to connect it here in a minute, but first I want to pull this down. The one that says script, just click on it and drag it down here somewhere. This would show the whole script that is that I wrote for the program on this dog. Um, I don't need to bring the serial setting ones out. Uh, channel, let's bring sequence. That'll show the sequence that I wrote put that up here and again you can scroll through all the different frames of the sequence well we can once we connect uh, what do you want around channel settings we need channel settings initially I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put it right about there then we can drag this down a little bit more so with these uh, three main windows, we can do pretty much everything we need to do. I'm going to come back up here and reconnect. It found it. And because there's already a program, it's running it, so I'm going to click on Stop Script here. Frame 0, I'm going to hit Load. So it should show where the uh, robot's going to start off in a stance where it's standing straight when the whole thing started. So basically by moving these, these are the different faders or controls, if you will, for each of the six servos. Now see, they don't have to be servos. If you come down here to um, channel settings, this is where you, I wrote in the name of which each, in my case, they are servos. See how it says servo, servo? If you click on that, it doesn't have to be a servo. I can make it an input or an output. And if they select an output, then it's basically you can use it as an on-off switch to turn lights on or off, or turn a fixed motor on or off, or activate a, a sound effect. And I've done all those things in the past with many of my servo-controlled projects. But at any rate, this is where you would type in servo 0 through 5, what the names of them all are, and then the first time that we do a save, it'll it'll bring all that information over here so you can see, oh, this fader control is going to control the uh, front right leg. Anywhere I move that, that front right, right leg is going to move. When I get it where I want it, where everything looks good, in this case, I wanted them all to look good for a frame zero. Like that. I wanted it to look like when the robot is standing flat and all legs are equal. Then you just come down and you say save frame and it'll save that as your frame zero. Then the next frame it's going to save would be frame number one, because it starts with frame zero, counts to one. So you just kind of build your whole routine up frame by frame by frame. In this case, I had 86 frames, as you can see, and each one of them has a, a different setting. If I just pick uh, another setting at random, I don't know, let's just see what frame six is. Let's see if these move when I go to frame six. Boom. See how everything changed? Here's a frame seven. I'm going to load it. Boom. So this is just showing how all the controls that you move, wherever you move them, it'll memorize that, save it as a frame, and that's how you build up a routine. If you have a frame that you know you're going to use a lot of, in this case frame zero, which I knew was the home position, 
standing. So in between a lot of the other ones, I can always come back to this, load that so that it's loaded in here, and then I can save it because it's there. It's not going to overwrite the zero. It's going to write it if I hit this as the next frame. So I can save that home position again. And you can even take a whole sequence of things. For example, by using your shift control, uh, you want to maybe save all the way from frame zero through frame seven. Just do a, you know, a control C on your keyboard, save all those. When you paste them, it's going to paste them all again after, you know, your last frame and repeat a whole sequence. So you don't have to sit there and, and build everything up one by one if you don't want to. Uh, once you do have everything built up and you want to actually load it to the dog, then you come up and you say copy sequence to script. And once you do that, it's going to come up with a little box to confirm that you really want to do that. You say yes. Then this apply settings, which you can't read right now, is grayed out, will be highlighted. You would click the apply settings. Once you've done that, it's actually set it to the uh, Pololu Mini Maestro inside the dog. It'll be stored in there. And it'll also be running the script, so you can hit stop script. Now, anytime you're doing these programmings, you can either have the dog powered on or powered off. In this case, I had it powered off because the camera can't see it, so there wasn't a, any big point to this. Um, I'm going to load a frame. I'm going to purposely move back far enough. When I'm back far enough for you to see the dog, you won't be able to see the screen. So it's kind of, it's not going to be real intuitive what I was going to try to show you, but basically if I turn the dog on, and I had it loaded in the home position, which you can see it is. And if I took my mouse and moved one of these, for example, I'm going to move this bottom one, which says it's the neck up down. Let's move this down enough where you can at least see the neck. So as I move the fader up on the computer, as you can see, I can... That's how you can visualize and see what you're programming, what you're doing, where everything is. And because you can't see both at the same time, I'll show you up here what I was doing. The first one I was moving was my neck up down. And here was the left and right on the neck or the claw, whatever you'd like to call it. And as I was just moving those around, if you got them where you liked everything, then you would just click that and save it, and it would then save that as your uh, program frame. It's not really complicated. It can get complicated. Um, if you do when you don't like, then you can load that same frame, change it, and then over here there's a thing where it says save over current frame. So when you have a frame that didn't quite work right or you found that you squatted the dog down and it wouldn't stand back up because the servos aren't strong enough, you could rewrite it with less of a squat and uh, save it over the frame. So that's the basics of um, writing a script, programming the dog. And again, I did meet my goal. I just wanted to make an, an animated toy that kind of represented the old spot bot. I wanted it to be 3D printed and I didn't want to spend absolute maximum was 50. I didn't want to spend uh, any more than I had to. I was hoping around 40 and I'm actually closer to the $40 range. If you have six times the uh, $1.80 for the servos, the uh, Polo Lu device itself I recently found one on Amazon for $22. They used to be a lot cheaper. Um, battery pack would cost you a couple of bucks. I already had one, so I didn't have to buy that. Uh, On-off switch, I already had that, so I didn't have to buy that. Plastic was just scrap plastics that I had laying around, so I didn't have to buy that. So, as far as me trying to meet my goal, I did. And uh, all the panels are there. If I happen to make another one, then I'll do an actual build video showing how to assemble it. Otherwise, there really isn't a whole lot of point putting the files up on Thingiverse because without the build video, it's kind of a 
it's not hard, but it, there's many steps to the build and things you need to do in, or, in order for it to work out. Wouldn't be a whole lot of point. If I wanted to make it walk, then I, of course, would have changed some things about it. If I wanted to make it walk but stay with this animation that it's got, then uh, there's ways you could do that too. For example, the hard plastic feet that are down here, I could actually replace those with uh, little ratchet wheels. That would be very easy to use the movements that I'm able to get with just the single servo per leg and make the thing walk forward, for example, or even walk forward and turn. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of things a person can do with it. I've got some ideas. I kind of want to play with this idea, but with a biped man standing up, you know, a robot on two legs, and see if I can get the, the prancing march without the robot falling over. But again, using these very inexpensive 9G servos. I know you can do it with the more expensive digital servos that are faster and draw more current. No problem. But I just the uh, just the challenge of trying to use the really low cost stuff and uh see what can be done just for animation fun.